So I've got some workshop table building tricks that I think everyone should know. My shop build is rolling along, I've got the carpet up, the miter saw station is basically done, and I've got new tools on the way. The next logical step for me was the workshop table or the workbench. It's the centerpiece of every shop, and it's something I like to build early on because it helps you build everything else. Until you've got your workshop table, you'll constantly be struggling to assemble parts or just find a good cutting surface. I started with a great tip I learned years ago, added a couple others along the way, and built everything in the quickest, easiest fashion possible. So today I'm going to tell you what those tips are and even do a real quick walkthrough of how I built the entire project. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. Here's that great trick that I learned way back in my teens. The best top or surface for your workshop table is a flat, solid core door. You see these door slabs standing up in big box stores and lumber yards. They just look like thick, blank pieces of wood. Really, they're actually a complex assembly of lots of pieces and veneers. They usually have solid wood edges, thin sheet ply faces, and either MDF cores or sometimes glued up solid wood cores. The best ones also come without mortises for hinges and no holes bored for lock sets. So in other words, they're completely flat and blank. It's like these things were made to become workshop tables. They're the perfect dimensions for a work surface, usually 32 or 36 inches wide and 80 inches long. Not too big, not too small. They're also really thick and dense, so you can really beat on them and they weight your table down nicely. Also, they tend to be extremely flat. Because of the solid or glued up cores, they don't really suffer from warpage and they tend to hold their shape far better than normal plywood or even dimensional lumber. You want your work surface to be really flat because it helps you line up edges or keep things square when you're building. And on top of that, these things just come ready to use. It's like you have a whole workshop table just standing there, ready to put on a cart, wheel it out, and take it to the shop. They're also not terribly expensive. Even in these lumber crunch days, I got mine for about $80, which I see as a steal. Or you can sometimes even find them at Habitat for Humanity Restores in good shape. I just did a video on restores, so check that one out if you haven't seen it. I know you can do more complicated builds for your top, gluing up, or edge joining bigger boards, but I always ask, why bother? I like builds that are simple, inexpensive, and fast. And this is the epitome of all three. And yeah, you can beat this thing up pretty badly. Mine actually came with some chipped corners, which I got a discount for. But what's it matter? It's supposed to get beat up. It's a workshop table. You can do epoxy or glue patches on it as you go along, or you can just flip it. Because of how I built this table, which I'll show in a minute, I can literally just detach the top, flip it over, and start fresh with a new surface. So you're basically getting two tabletops for the price of one. And again, no time spent building it. They built it somewhere else in a factory, and all you had to do was transport it to the shop. The one caveat that I'll give here is that these things are heavy. And I mean pure dead weight. I'm not sure how heavy my solid MDF core door is, but I'm pretty sure it's heavier than me. It was all I could do to pick this thing up. I mostly dragged it or walked it around. With the shop table though, this basically works to your advantage. The extra weight just makes things more stable and durable. But because I built it on casters, that weight is still mobile around the shop. Which brings me to the other big tip of this project. I built this somewhat odd looking design for a very specific reason. Workflow. Here's the classic conundrum with the shop table. You're working with your components and they gradually begin to take over the table's surface. You need tools to work on them, but there's suddenly no room for your tools. It's almost like you need another table for your tools, which is silly because you just built one. That's why I use the tool shelf. It's like a second table directly beneath your table. With these slot windows, you have the perfect place to put your tools to get them off the work surface. It has a flush floor, so you can slide long tools straight in and out with no hangups. The window is five and a half inches tall, so you can even fit bulky tools. And openings on all four sides give you tons of access and storage potential. Tools, fasteners, glue, they're all right down here where your hands can easily reach them and you can see them at a glance. It's a lot like the tray shelf for nails and fasteners that I built into my miter saw stand. I also inset both the legs and the shelf by about an inch or two so I would have a clampable edge. I can now clamp down to my table from the full perimeter, any angle, any position. I found this to be extremely important over the years. I see this as the ultimate workstation. Simple and functional, and also fast and easy to build. 
I knocked the whole thing out in about six hours. Materials were right about $250, even with these pricey five inch locking casters and crazy expensive wood these days. So with those design tips in mind, I'll walk you really quickly through how I actually built it. I like to knock out my table saw breakdowns in one go. It gets this tedious cutting out of the way, and I've then got basic components to work with. So the legs for the table are just decent two by fours. I ripped the coped edges off of them, both sides, so that they would glue up better and just look more finished. And the tool shelf is basically a table skirt with windows. To construct the skirt, I used three quarter inch plywood ripped down to 11 and a half inch widths. To make my legs, I cut the two by fours down to about 27 inch sections. This was my overall height, minus tabletop, caster height, and a block for the caster attachment. I just glued and brad nailed these sections into L's. And if you think this isn't strong enough, just look at these little cutoffs I made. I can't even break one inch of connection with my hands. They're outrageously strong. So I got my door up on some horses, then used the leg sections to do some basic layout with a combo square. This would create my footprint for everything else. Now I had to shape the skirt boards. I wanted a five and a half inch window with three inches of material at the top for table support and two inches at the bottom for shelf support. I just plotted and drew this out in rectangles. Then I used a spare hole saw bit to draw rounded corners. I thought this would come out looking cooler than square corners, which it did. Now I actually had to cut all these shapes. For the long runs, I just did drop cuts with the circular saw because it makes such clean straight lines. I intended to then jigsaw the curves, but my jigsaw decided to go haywire on me. I've never liked this thing and I have a new saw on the way, but I had to tinker with this one just to get this project done. My corner sort of got botched as a result, but it's just a shop table in my shop, so I didn't care too much. Eventually I had all my skirt components roughed out and sanded up so they were at least decent. I was ready to assemble them into simple box walls. But before I did this, I put pocket holes in the upper three inch edges of the skirt boards. This was so I'd have a way to attach the skirt to the underside of the tabletop. I also used a scrap of half inch ply to mark bottom edges for my lower shelf thickness. This gives you an easy sight lineup for when you're assembling. I ripped down some three quarter inch ply into strips and then used them as cleats for the bottom shelf. I glued them, brought them right up to my marked line and shot them into place with brads. At this point, I also cut the shelf itself. I cut it freehand from half inch thick plywood. This shelf won't ever hold a ton of weight. That's just not what it's for. So I thought half inch ply would be just fine here. Finally, I was free to assemble the skirt walls using glue and brads. This was an easy thing to do using my large flat door as a work surface. Now here's where assembly got a little weird. To avoid issues down the line, I went ahead and slid my shelf into the top of the skirt box. I did this for two reasons. One, it kept the box square during installation. And two, it also allowed me to use a normal drill with a long pocket hole bit to attach the top. I got my lineup right, then put in one and a quarter inch pocket screws. I didn't use glue. Again, I might want to flip this door later and I could release these screws with a truncated drill. So I didn't want this attachment to be permanent. When that was done, I wrestled the whole thing down to the floor and attached the legs. Because of their L shape, this was really easy. I just slid them against the box corners and screwed them from the inside with one and five eighths screws. Six screws per corner made them very strong. Now I cut little mounting blocks for my casters. They're just three quarter inch ply rectangles. I glued and shot them onto the bottom of my two by fours. Then I mounted the casters using one and a quarter lags and washers. The mounting block ensured that these had strong cross grain to tap into rather than just end grain. I flipped the whole thing back up and just as I'd hoped, the half inch shelf dropped right into place on the cleats. I dribbled glue down onto these ledges, then shot laterally through the skirt face to draw things together. It only took a few brads per window. And with that, I was all done. A whole workshop table in about six hours. So that's it. That's how I built the rolling work table with the flat door work surface and the slot shelf for tools. This thing rolls like a dream, but it's got lockable casters so I can easily make it stationary. And I can also make custom chalk blocks for it if I really want it to stay put in the future. What did you think about this build? Are these tips helpful? Do you have any questions about my design? Or are there things that you would do differently? Let me hear about it down in the comments. I'm gonna link some of the tools from this video down below. Feel free to shop those links. And when you do, remember that we receive a tiny commission from whatever you purchase at no extra charge to you. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. I've still got a lot of stuff left to build in the shop, so there's gonna be more shop build projects coming up. Also, please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something.
I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.